it's called showroom stock racing. Each manufacturer racing for street and track dominance. A new decade. New drivers. New cars. The same old spills and thrills. It's the Firestone Firehawk Challenge. shower has made much of most part a swimming hole. The rain continues and most of the teams, especially the new ones, are really not prepared for this. This should make for a most interesting race. You're right, and what makes the 1990 Firehawk Series different is the new class system. Last year's champion, Brett Goodman, has this week's Firestone Fact. All three of these race cars are similar. In fact, other than the necessary safety equipment, they're all virtually showroom stock as you would receive them off your dealer's showroom. They'll also be running on the same Firestone Firehawk tires that you can get out of your dealer's store. But that's where the similarity ends. In the Grand Sports class, we have the larger cars, usually rear-wheel drive, with engine displacements of up to five liters. The types of cars you'll find in this class are the Nissan 300ZX, the Porsche 944S, the Ford Mustang, the Pontiac Firebird, and the Chevrolet Camaro. In the sports class, we now see cars that have engine displacements of two to two and a half liters with some different drivetrain configurations, such as mid-engine rear-wheel drive and front-engine all-wheel drive. You just might see the addition of turbochargers also in this class. Other vehicles that you'll see racing in the sports class are the Eagle Talon, the Toyota MR2, and the BMW 325iS. Last, but definitely not least, is the touring class, usually front-wheel drive cars with displacements of around two liters. This is the class where you'll see the pocket rockets racing against four-door sedans. Other cars in this class are the Volkswagen Jetta, the Integra Acura, the Honda Civic, the Honda CRX, and the Nissan four-door Stanza. Even though we have three separate classes of racing, they'll all be racing amongst themselves to win. That's part of the excitement in the Firestone Firehawk series. That also makes for a very large field, 34 cars on the starting grid, Larry. Let's take a look. And Vic, appropriately, the bright white number one Camaro is on the pole. That is the familiar Ron Fellows and Terry Betts behind the wheel. Row four has returning Ironman Nick Holmes in row six. One of the new sport class cars, the MR2 of Comacchio and Service. Row seven, the sport BMW, Duckworth Johnson. Row nine has the Rainmaster, Mike Rivet. One of Canada's brightest women racers, Terry McDonald, is in row 11. Mario Lamothe returns in row 13 in his Acura. The Guido Enzo in row 15 in their Snickers Jetta. And Bill Adam and Richard Laporte, unable to qualify, come from the very back. The Firestone Firehawk Challenge is brought to you by Nissan. Built for the human race. We'll return with more on race day right after this. of uh, weather, and the traffic certainly will make it uh, a very full, hands-full race for them today. Slip slide through turn one, Ron Fellows. You know, he could really drive this track with his eyes closed. That's how experienced he is. Behind him, Nick Longy in the number nine, and Rick Fye is that Porsche with the lights on. These guys look more like swamp buggies. <laughs> Nick, you know, this is a tough racetrack under perfect conditions, and with these race cars, cars actually not really designed to be racers, these guys really are going to have job in your hands today. Interesting, Larry. It's Camaro, Firebird Camaro. There you see Rick Buys Porsche. It is a little bit of a lighter car, maybe better weight distribution. Maybe he'll have the advantage in conditions like this. 
Nick, I don't know. I, I think you and I have the biggest advantage in a race day like this. Now, we're looking at Vi. He's a four-year veteran of the Porsche Series, and interestingly enough, the only race he's ever won is in a downpour like this. Oh, there he gets a little sideways, a little fishtail. I don't know if that's because of the slippery weather. Maybe he just put a little bit too much gas in. <laughs> it's got to feel like they're running a nice Now, this is quarter number eight. Now, it seems the number 33 car of Kirk Robinson, who was third, is now missing. Now, there goes Rick Vi. Let's see what happened to Robinson. Oh, there he goes, locks it up, oh. no control, and look at the air that car takes as he hits the tire barrier. Now, the worst part of this crash for a guy like him is that he's got to fix this car all himself. Now, we're uh, back into live action here. There is Ron Fellows also uh, leading the field into corner number three. Ron's teammate, Nick Longy, right behind him. Then Rick Bai is in third, another most port veteran, inching his way toward the front. You know, the track is so wet that you can't even see the race line. These conditions uh, really tax everyone's driving skills as the leaders attempt to pull away. Oh, uh -oh. Oh, 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 oh. Off can the Mario Andretti it? straight. Hold on. Oh, the oh, other oh. one. And just by. Well, looking at it again here, you see him getting off under the grass. You can see the ABS trying to slow the car, but the grass is like a sheet of ice. A scary first race for Dominic Condello. And he just gets by the car of Kirk Robinson that had gone off moments before up and over come on down baby look like he planned it you know that <laughs> larry let's check in on touring class now the number 14 civic of tony di francesco is leading he qualified fastest and he's a veteran of most point he knows the track while acura's hold down second and third as they come through corner one Dick, let's update sport class now in that class uh, michael sylvester is taking full advantage of his all-wheel drive talent certainly four wheels are better than two you know he is followed by the very nimble mr2 of George Camacchio, the yellow number 11. There he is. Now, he used to race here at Mostport back in the 60s and the 70s, but uh, Sylvester in this white number 59 is well ahead right now of the MR2's threat. Back to Grand Sport, and we'll take a look at the leader, Ron Fellows, who is way out in front, tries to slide it through Moss Corner. Nick Longhi in the Camaro and the colorful 680 of Rick By, our second and third. By superior in skill and experience, but you know what? Rain may be the great equalizer in this battle between these two. Inside now with Rick By, the Porsche veteran. As you can see, or rather not see, just how wet it is. When you're behind another car, all you get is spray and visibility simply does not exist. And look at this, up to Mario Andretti straight. By pulls to the left and goes on by and says bye-bye to Nick Longy <laughs> as he now has to catch up to Ron Fellows. And of course, Longy hoping now that Bai might make some kind of mistake. Bill Adam in red, white, and blue is another top Canadian racer, forced to start from the back of the grid today. He did not have an opportunity to qualify. Now, he has moved up well, but he has elected to stay on slicks in these rainy conditions. That's a big gamble. He'll have to take extra care. Yeah, you bet. I mean, that would seem almost disastrous to me as he comes through turn one. You can see, Vic, he's offline from the normal racing line, but uh, we understand that you, know, you get more traction when you're up there. And here's Adam. Adam looks like he's out of control. Oh, and there goes Adam head on into the Armco. He does lose some traction. Bill oh. Adams spins all the way around. He keeps going, though. And a matter of fact, enough traction to get out of the mud and back onto the track. Now, let's update touring. Mike Rivet has taken over the lead here, driving a great race in this rain, and he seems to have found that race line. Followed by teammate John Shirk in their Acuras, who are one and two. Terry DeFrancesco, our leader when we last checked in, had trouble between two and three. There he is. Hold on, Tony, hold on. Oh. These Firehawk drivers are checking all the areas of the track here at Mosport. Not only that, but I think they're all going to need a little bit of wash jobs when this race is over. Back to uh, the GS class, and Rick By, he seems to have closed the gap between himself and Ron Fellows for first significantly. Now, Ron is approaching traffic. He'll have to look for openings. It is anticipation that will be the key as he approaches the back markers. Oh, and look at the great anticipation because Fellows gets hung up in the traffic. By is actually moving to the inside, and he'll make the pass and go into the lead. Let's see what it looks like uh, from inside of By's car. You can see now he anticipates what might happen. He swings the car hard to the right. Looks like he's going to have the momentum. You can see that on the left-hand side, there's Fellows, and By slides through, taking advantage of that traffic. 
And I don't think we should be surprised, Larry, when you look at Rick By, Ron Fellows, two of the most experienced drivers here at most parts under these conditions, and they are your leaders after 13 laps. We'll return with more race day on TSN in just a moment. Somehow on the outside, it was a very daring move, and I think that I might have seen Vi's car jump just a little bit. Ron may have bumped him. It may have as they come into turn one, but look at this. Ron Fellows is back in front, and Rick Vi is forced to play catch up one more time. There is Ron Fellows as he somehow was able to hold on to that car in these good conditions. Now here's what it looked like inside of Ron Fellows' car. You can see him getting very close. He can't draft in this type of weather, I don't think, but what he is trying to do is kind of Turned the favor that Bai gave to him a lap earlier. There he goes to the left-hand side of Bai. You saw Bai slip just a little bit. And Ron goes out there oh, where... There's that bump you yep, were talking yep. about. They didn't touch. Under normal conditions, this move would not have worked. But he's able to slide through. And look at that. Ron gave uh, Rick a little wave <laughs> as he went by. Thanks very much. Maybe that was the so long wave. But we'll wait and see. And that maybe. Is. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ron Fellows is your leader here with Rick Bai second. Let's go back and check on the progress of Bill Allen. Has he been able to stay out after his off-course excursion? Yes, he has. There he is in that red, white, and blue knees. And oh, trouble in the back behind him in that black number seven. That is Nick Jamison, his eagle talent. And that is a familiar sight. We've seen that happen many times already today. You bet that combination of eight, nine, and ten have eaten the drivers up today. Well, now we're back to the sport class. Now, this is Nick's teammate, Michael Sylvester. He's still leading that class and is, of course, all-wheel drive number 59. Now, this is the first time that this class has run under conditions quite like this, so it's quite a challenge. Number 11, the yellow car, the MR2 of George Camacchio. Both of these sport class cars are very quick under these uh, very unsavory conditions. Third in sport class is the youngest Firehawk driver. This is Paul Duckworth. He traded his Camaro for a BMW this year. Now, we're inside with Paul. You can see just how touchy the car is in this rain. He has got to be gentle on the throttle. Anyone who's driven on ice knows that any single minor slip can really cost you. Over the crest of the hill, now when you're going downhill, times two the sensitiveness of this race car, the throttle, the steering wheel. And don't touch the brakes because the worst thing you can do is lock up the car. And uh, Duckworth is really in trouble now. Oh, he goes around, he does. It's a 360, but it's reversed by 180. What is it, like 180 equivalent? Unbelievable, and you can see the damage now done as he comes together with the number 67 of Mark Schill. I saw that car coming up in the in-car camera, and I wondered if Duckworth would get by untouched, but it looks like Schill takes most of the damage. And here goes Duckworth. He got away with it. It was <laughs> Schill that got banged. Not an uncommon scenario. Many times, the instigator of a problem on a racetrack gets away unscathed. Sylvester in this number 59 continues to lead sports class. He's in for a routine stop. Now the number 11 Toyota MR2, driven by George Camacchio, will take over the lead, at least until he stops. This car is very new to racing, but service and Camacchio, the co-drivers, really have it worked out. The man behind the wheel right now, George Camacchio, is the subject of this week's SO Protect Profile. When he is not racing, George Camacchio continues his passion for cars at this exclusive West End Toronto dealership for, of course, exotic cars. But... George's roots in Canadian racing go back a long, long way. I um, emigrated to Canada from Northern Italy uh, way back in 54. 
after spending a few years just learning a bit of English, this and that, I decided to uh, try and get involved on a very small scale as a very, very small amateur with some friends of mine helping. And uh, bought a little racing car, which didn't amount to very much. It was the uh, off a little Fiat 600 uh, with a special body, light body, and uh, ran that for a few races. Uh, then I uh, got involved with uh, a bit of sedan racing. Uh, these are the days of the minis. And uh, we just uh, ran that a couple of years, then we graduated to a little larger Fiat, and uh, we were uh, fairly competitive uh, during the Bolova days. Uh, with cars that weren't supposed to be competitive. So that uh, proves that the preparation was good and uh, I suppose the driving was fair anyway. Those pictures prove that this man ties racing's history with the present. In the busy showroom filled with Lamborghinis, Porsches, Ferraris and Lotuses, and such a long successful career in Canadian racing, it must be a tempting idea to hang up the helmet for good. Uh, you look at Paul Newman, he's older than I am, and he's not any slower than he was a few years ago. After a strong drive, George managed to bring the MR2 into first place in sports. Now, George is not slowing down at all. Lloyd Service will have to get in and go to the finish. Endurance racing certainly is won and lost in the pits, and the drivers today, they must be anxious to pit and escape these frightening conditions. If there's a car in front of you coming up the back straight away, there's so much mist you can hardly see a thing. I don't enjoy it at all when it's like that, but uh, at least we kept her off the walls more than a few guys did. As soon as you get behind another car to try to pass or even stay behind them, you can't see a thing. This is just what we wanted. We set up for a race. There was the only chance we had to run a race. And uh, somebody up there came through for us. This is bad. We're so excited. When you get into the puddles, uh, Somebody lifts a car up and it just slides off the road. It, it's, it's a real bitch. You know, like usually you can tell where the line is, but you got to drive around the puddle. Oh. I think that pretty well sums it up. Larry, as Nick Moran takes the 680 Porsche back out, third overall, still trying to catch the number one Camaro. Surprisingly, hasn't hit it yet. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that uh, certainly one of the problems with the racing drivers is that you don't miss their point because they're too subtle. That's really not one of their vices, is it? The Cardinal, one hour, 30 minute mark, the halfway point. Ron Fellows continues as your leader, and second is teammate number nine of Nick Lundy, but they both have yet to pit. Which is really surprising, considering everyone else has, and all the while. Yeah, it, it really confuses me, Rick, because usually in these conditions, you want to be as safe as you possibly can, and usually they actually burn up a little more fuel than normal. Here's the number 15 Camaro, Nick Holmes. He is driving alone out there. He sits in fourth. Not really a challenge to the top three, but a very steady ride from Nick Holmes in that red number 15. Now let's catch up on what's happening in touring class. Mike Rivett continues his unusual racing line, comfortably in first. Amazing that certain drivers are really most capable in adverse conditions. Mike certainly getting the most out of his accurate, accurate. The overall leader, Ron Fellows, brings a nearly empty Camaro finally in for fuel, sniffing at the fumes. Firestone's a new driver. TC, Terry Betts will get behind the wheel now and try to keep that number one in front. Well, that car has got to be gasping for fuel, I'll tell you, at this point. Here are your standings after 54 laps. The Camaro leads the Porsche here. Race day on TSN.
Round one of the Firestone Firehawk Challenge continues at Mostport Park. Your leader, the number one Camaro, now being driven by Terry Betts, ready to head back out. Well, now new drivers are behind the wheels of all of the top cars, and perhaps we'll see some new battles developing. You know, with the experience of Rick Bai and Ron Fellows, the conditions, perhaps they didn't play as large of a role as otherwise they would have, but with the less experienced drivers and conditions steadily worsening, it should be a very interesting race to the finish. Let's hear from Ron Fellows. We've got uh, about a three-minute lead. Terry just got cruised around and stayed out of trouble for another hour. I think we got almost two hours out of that first tank of fuel. But in the slippery, you know, the wet conditions, you're not using the throttle nearly as much. We're in good shape. You bet they are. Isn't that nice, eh? Lead like that. But the work really is beginning now, I think, for Terry Betts. You I mean, he's supposed to be the full-time driver. Ron is what they're calling just a guest. And uh, Terry's first full drive in this car right now. There you can see Moran in the uh, rainbow painted car number 680. He's taken over after the pit stop. Very loose on that point uh, on the racetrack. Loses some momentum, which uh, really gives Longy an opportunity to move in. Look at the different lines, Larry. As Longy in the Camaro goes to the outside of turn one, and Moran takes it a little tighter and now there's no drafting as you mentioned here's a problem we've always talked about before divided attention as we ride along with Moran good point there watch the rear view mirror top of the screen eyes looking ahead glancing to the cars behind him attention divided and he is sideways can he save it will he lose any position as a result of that moving up there on the inside there comes Longy and Longy gets by isn't that something look at yeah see how he fish tails here that's just enough to let Longy get through on the inside and he moves into second place as Moran in that 680 drops back to third now the question is can the number 680 Porsche retaliate and in these wet conditions well you just never know anything is possible at any time out there in the race course. This is the battle for second position uh, as Moran loses a little bit of ground now to Longy. You can see him, he's still fighting that car right on the ragged edge of control, even on the straightaways. Now the conditions are very hazardous. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen that most drivers have a stopwatch. Being a three-hour timed event gives them an idea of exactly where they are in the race. Now we come through turn eight. We've already lost one car here, remember? Oh, he oh finally my. loses it. Can you believe this? Oh, boy, I'll tell you, if there was oh, ever. Oh, look at this. All the way around, keeps it going. No harm, no foul, no wall, no <laughs> tire contact, nor the contact with any other race car. That was an incident that was a whole lap in development. The number nine, second place Camaro is in for some ESO fuels, tires, but no driver change. This Terrastar team has decided to save some time by leaving Nick Longy behind the wheel. And in the meantime, look at this. Nick Moran regains second place as Longy just sits and waits for fuel. You know, Vic, on a day like today, I don't know that this is such a good idea. Now, I understand the situation. They were not prepared to make driver changes, but you have to work so hard under these conditions that I think fatigue could become a major factor. Meanwhile, the number 680 Porsche carves his way through traffic on this very slippery track probably anticipating another attack soon on that number nine Camaro. Let's check in with the sports class. This yellow number 11 Toyota, now driven by Lloyd Service, continues to lead in this class. The light weight of this car, mid-engine, seems to be very happy in these wet conditions. There's the second place car, the number 59 Talon of Drew Fesser. They lost some time in the pits, but uh, he may be closed again. The car may be a little quicker than the uh, number 11 of uh, Lloyd Service from now behind the wheel. There you can see that Fesser has begun to uh, close in a little bit, but uh, Service really running smooth. There's Fesser coming around this corner and uh, finding that the very characteristic line that's basically offline from the normal racing line. In touring, Mikey likes it. Mike Rivette not bothered by the Puddle jumping here at Mosport continues to lead. In fact, stretching it now over teammate Lindsey Riddell. And obviously, Lindsey hasn't been watching White yeah. style. Look at this. Get him back. Hey, that's not bad. Getting just one wheel off. We've seen four <laughs> he, go yeah. off here today. He has a style all of his own, and it is effective. Oh, this one is not so effective. The fans treated to some great action. Here at most 
Motorsport is the number one car in the number one position. This is Terry Beth behind the wheel, and now he is poised to take his first win in his first race. Behind Terry is the number 11 sports class leader in his yellow MR2. This is Lloyd Service now driving. And after three hours, the checkered flag flies over the overall and grand sport winner, the number one Camaro of Betts and Fellows. And the 680 Porsche of Bayern Moran takes second in grand sport. And Nick Longhi, having driven the entire race on his own, brings his car home in third position. A wet and wild day here at Mosport. The final in grand sport, the top five Fellows and Betts winners. And over in the uh, sports class is the yellow number 11 of Camacho and Service takes first. Sylvester and Fesser are, are in second position. And finishing first in touring, Mike Rivet, followed by Redell and Shirt. And now the winners getting soaked in champagne as if they weren't wet enough on behalf of Larry Newton and our entire crew. I'm the Crowder. Thanks for watching. Join us next time for race two from Shannonville. This is race day on TSN.